All right, guys, I've got kind of a different video today. Um, you know, we talk about the abortion issue and how wrong it is. And especially in Christian circles, we will talk about, you know, it's wrong. And, you know, the question I have is what are people doing about it? Um, you can either solve the part of a problem or part of the solution in life. And the thing is, you know, um, we gotta we gotta have different um, solutions for this. Um, there are a lot of people who have a lot of money, and they have they are swimming in their wealth, and they will not lift a finger to help a mother who needs it. So, for example, uh, just this morning, and I I'm not trying to be, what's the word? Not really. Tr I'm just trying to communicate how I feel about something. And if it comes across harsh, let it be so. I'm somebody who will tell it the way it is. Um, basically, you know, I lost my home and the landlord wanted to sell. And then uh, situations have changed for me in my life. And I am still trying to get on my feet from getting hit pretty hard and coming to a different state and starting all over again. So as I'm doing this, um, <clears throat> I tried a couple churches here and I chose one. And when I went to them for help, it was almost a big inconvenience for them. It, this, and I'm not talking about a small church. I have seen small churches be some of the most generous churches that have ever been around. They will be there for you. This is a pretty big church. Um, they're swimming in their wealth. They have over what, like a fifty million dollar building. Um, they've got, they've got it. They've got the money, and I know they got it. Okay, so when I went in there, it was kind of like, well, you know, we don't really have the money. We kind of, uh, we've helped other people, and the funds are low. Okay, all right, you know. So there were some gift cards given to me, and that was like, okay, a one time thing, and they actually got that back more than what they gave because I'm giving myself and you know tithes and offerings or whatever you want to call it <clears throat> giving so then um there was another situation and I you know and I already decided to be a member so now let's see if they'll help a mother if she's a member and guess what nope I was told by someone in leadership if you need anything at all come to me and i will help you i will give you you know let me know if you need anything at all okay so i went to that person and all of a sudden things started to change it was now well we have to talk to somebody else and actually this person i did talk to was like um let me get back to you sunday night so sunday night last night came and I searched them out and I basically talked to both of these people and said, hey, you know, this doesn't sit right with me. Uh, you told me and I held them accountable and it doesn't mean you don't hold a church accountable. Just because you're going to church and there's leadership, you also hold them accountable. And I said, hey, you know, you told me you would help me and now you're not. Well, then they offered me a job and said, we'll get back to you tonight about the job. All afternoon, nothing, okay? The guy, I guess the guy who was going to hire me was on lunch. Last night, nothing, okay? So broken promises again. And, you know, when you give your word to somebody, unless you are in shape yourself and you can keep your word, don't be giving your word to people, basically. Because broken promises break trust and then... You don't know whether you're coming or going and you don't know you know who to trust and what's going on so then i talked to this other guy <clears throat> and he said that their benevolent fund was gone that it was like in the red negative and i'm just like well hold up here wait a minute what do you mean it's in the negative you guys bring in fourteen thousand a week and you're telling me that your benevolent fund is empty what's going on you know are you uh are you mismanaging the money do you not have enough put aside for this fund what's going on and i wanted to see their budget too which was not on hand at the time of course but um <clears throat> i think he was saying to understand the numbers you know it looks like a big number but they have it going everywhere which is true 
That's how you have a household budget. But I know they got the money, and I told them that. I said, I know you got it, but you don't want to help me. And um, so then from there, he said that they had, the need had come all at once um, for people to have help. And that's fine and dandy, but you can replenish that benevolent fund with a overflow fund of savings pretty quickly. And so not only did they not help me, but I continued to express myself and said, you know, this is not a church to me. I do not want to be part of a stingy church. And I said, I'm gonna tell you straight up the way it is. I said, when you expect me to give to you my time, my money, I mean, I've been out there, and, and this is not my motive to go to a church to get money. It's not, I'm not serving a church to get money, okay? I'm out there soul winning because it's my convictions. I've cleaned the church, which is what, 50 bucks an hour on average. Uh, I've given a lot of time to that. I've been there, you know, and I've supported them 100%, but now that it's my turn, they're not there for me. So I saw this pretty quick. It's only been a couple months. I saw it pretty quickly. And, you know, <clears throat> the problem is when someone wants your time and they're really pushing, come on, help some more. We need some more help. We need some more. And then they call you a family. The church is supposed to be a family and they don't want to help you. There's something wrong there. And it's not even about the money. It's about principle. Principle says we take care of one another. So doctrine is really important in a church. And it's vital, but also what's important is for a church to be there for you. So I had a conversation via text this morning with someone and said, take me right off that email. And let me tell you, I will not be a part of a stingy church. And I told this man last night, I'm very generous. I will like, I'm someone who will give the shirt off my back to somebody. Um, I see people all the time asking for money, you know, a dollar here, a dollar there. They need something. And I'm there for people, you know, and I'm not going to be somebody who, you know, you know, and like I said to this person, you know, he said, I'll pray for you. You know, I said, prayer without works means nothing. Uh, that's in the book of James. You know, what good is it if a man says, go in peace, have faith, and the person is naked and destitute without clothing. Luckily, I'm not, but I said to the guy, I said, you don't even know my needs. You have not communicated I could be dying right now. I could have no food for my family. I could be really strapped, you know, for money and you haven't even asked, what are my needs? You know, where, where am I at? How about a, at least a bag of groceries if I needed that? So because of that, <clears throat> you know, the churches, we're supposed to submit to one another in the fear of Christ. And all I gotta say is woe to this church. That's all I gotta say because this church is swimming in money, and not only this church is swimming in money, but they've got a connection, a network with tons of other churches that are swimming in money. And when they don't want to help the poor and the needy and those who need a hand, uh, don't tell me, don't tell me that you're a Christian. Don't tell me you're a Christian. And if you are a Christian, you're a disobedient one because you don't go around keeping your money, you know, and not obeying what the gospel says or the Bible says and not helping the poor. So a lot of times, I guess I'm going to wrap this up with this thought. A lot of times we blame women for being scared financially that they cannot afford to have children. Yet we have the rich who oppress the poor and we have the rich who don't like to share. And when that's happening, especially for single moms or moms who don't have a lot, it's a disgrace, it's shameful, and it's a slap in God's face. When women have children, they're left behind, or they're widowed, or whatever's happening, and you will not help other people. So that's what I got today, and you know, it's, it's don't, don't be looking at all the women all the time who feel like they can't afford to have kids. Look at yourself and say, what am I doing to help women? And I will say that is an argument that the pro-choicers use a lot. It's not right. Um, it doesn't justify killing your kid. But what are we doing to help others, especially in Christian circles, when you see other people helping women who are not even Christians? We are even more responsible 
than anyone else to help other people. And we have a generous God who has given us everything. I mean, we're royalty. We have the riches of Christ. And we don't, and when we don't want to turn around and help someone, and we say, oh, it's not in the budget, and we can't turn around and say, let me take something out of my pocket for you to help you. We've got problems. People have problems. Yesterday when I was in church, there was a guy who came in. I sat with him, showed him some hospitality. He was very different, very different. He had tattoos all over him. He had um, tattoos on his face. He reminded me of one of my sons. He was a tattoo artist, very different. He went to a traditional sh church and <clears throat> made sure he felt welcomed and when he said he was living in his van I said do you need something do you need a few bucks do you need something and you know that's the type of hospitality we should have where we're getting to know someone and say you know what brought you here uh, you know have you heard the gospel are you saved you know and get in someone's life and say hey how can I help you and um, so usually we're blessed when we help others so when we don't want to obey God's word and we don't want to help those <clears throat> who are going through stuff, just look out because God is not going to help that person. He will not bless those who are not willing to be an instrument for his kingdom.